Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Lori. Lori was messaged on LinkedIn by a man who claimed his name was Nick. The two carried on with an online relationship for over nine months. Lori reached out to us after having doubts about Nick being who he claimed to be. She wanted to share her story. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Lori Noseworthy. I am from Newfoundland, Canada. I have been single for 16 years. I am a Christian woman. I have a deep faith in my Lord and Savior. I am suffering from a very, very bad case of a broken heart. It feels like I have had my heart shattered into a thousand pieces, stabbed with a thousand daggers. And it's been over a month since it happened. And it's been very hard to get past. Anytime I see like a wedding announcement or something, I literally break down and cry. Never loved anybody as much as I love this person who destroyed my trust. I've been on LinkedIn for a number of years, building my network and making connections with people because you never know who you're going to meet. So I started making all these connections with people. I have almost 2000 connections now, people connecting with me. I accepted the connection request and he immediately said, hello. So I said, hello back. I was just texting him off and on. And then we, it was more on a daily basis. The more we talked, the more I looked forward to it. It felt like a growing connection. Loneliness is a big thing that makes people susceptible to these scams. In Lori's case, she had moved to a place where she didn't have a lot of friends or didn't have a lot of contacts. Her family was in another country and she was extremely lonely. And so as the scammer reached out and they started having these conversations, she started looking forward to these conversations more and more. And it filled that void of loneliness in her heart, but it also left her more susceptible to being scammed. I started really noticing how he had an effect on me with the words he would say. If I was having a bad day, he would come back. Oh, it's okay, babe. You know, you're stronger or whatever, you know, he have a way to build me up. And it's just the connection that I just wanted to have for the last 16 years. I asked him to video chat with me. And uh, during our course of our conversation, initially, he had told me he was in. <clears throat> I wish I had the brains to have um, researched this, but he said he was in Yemen. He's a plastic surgeon working as a surgeon in Yemen with the military through peacekeeping mission. We talked about how he had two dogs. He named, he called them Max and Bob. And later on, he sent me a video of the two dogs. And I was like, oh, babe, is that your voice? <laughs> Do you like the new doc? Is it your favorite place to hang out now? Huh? Is this your favorite place? Huh? Is your favorite place to hang out? Bobo, are you still scared of it? Are you still scared of it, Bobo? It's like, yeah, that's my voice. And I was like, oh, I will remember it. I will keep picturing, I'll keep listening to your voice. I was talking to a friend of mine about him. And she asked, she said, have you video chatted with him yet? I said, no, I, he, he says that he can't video chat because of security reasons and stuff. And he actually did try a few days before to video chat with me and um, it was like a few seconds and then he sent me a picture. So I was just like, okay. He even sent me his passport and another picture. We carried on our conversations every day and every day that would get longer and longer and longer and longer. He said he worked shift work 10 to 4, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Over time, I'd say starting in August, I would start getting up four or five o'clock in the morning, sometimes even three, just to talk to him. I put a special notification on WhatsApp so that I would hear it any time of day or night. A lot of time I was spent most of my summer, pretty much all my summer, out in the garden center at work. And I would chat with him out, out there. I would chat with him down at the lumber door. I, I, yeah, I work at Home Depot. <laughs> I'm a cashier. 
we started talking about me moving down there, him coming home, marriage. We were sort of planning the wedding. So we started making plans for when he came here and I would have to, you know, get rid of a lot of stuff in my apartment, a lot of stuff that I have and prepare to move down. I stopped questioning why he can't talk to me, but in the back of my head, the question was always there. Is he real? And the more I think about it, the more it hurts and I don't want to think about it. He said he had a meeting with his commander regarding us and getting emergency leave from the base. So it's like, oh, that's fantastic. I was so happy. Like I never felt such joy, such intense emotional joy. I was losing weight. I had something to really work hard for. You know, I had my wedding coming up you know, that we were planning. I was looking for wedding rings and everything else. And I was just so, I felt such love and such joy. And, and it felt like my heart was just going to explode if we didn't get to be together. I asked him if he had a Bible. He said, no, I, I don't have a Bible. I said, okay, so give me your email. I will send you a book of the Bible and we can go through it together. That, that's what really gets me, is how can they pretend to be Christian? How can he say the words that he said that I agreed with when we were discussing the, the first two chapters of Ephesians? How can he have such knowledge? How can he claim to be Christian? So scammers use religion because they want to build that connection and they know that people that are very religious tend to lean on religion and God in a lot of circumstances and so they manipulate these people by making them think that God is leading them to them and they're living this wholesome relationship and people in this situation when you talk about religion or you tell them you're Christian they tend to put, let their guard down and so that's why these scammers use this if you talk to somebody and they've asked you for money and they pretend to be super religious that's usually a red flag his meeting with the commander was very favorable he said that yeah okay um he can go on leave i just had to send off a request for leave uh on his behest to an email address that he gave me he wrote out what i was to send and i just copied it put it into an email and i sent it we waited nearly three days and nothing. I was going through such anxiety being away from him. I was losing my hair. I got a response back within three hours. And that's when my heart dropped, plummeted to the pits of the earth, heart drop. They said that as I am requesting leave, I have to pay for a replacement. I got online. I got on Google and I just searched and I asked a question, do fiancés have to pay for emergency leave or uh, any kind of leave for military officers or doctors? I got my answer, no. My heart was breaking because I knew something was really wrong. My heart got ripped out that day truly destroyed and I never ate for two days. I lost seven pounds in like three days. After receiving this video and all of the information that Lori had given us, we started to vet it all. We did a reverse image search on our website, socialcatfish.com and found the real man in the photos. His name is Dr. Ryan Mirix. We found his Instagram page, his Facebook page, and his business page. Dr. Mirix is a doctor, but he's not on some peacekeeping mission for the military. He's in fact a plastic surgeon out of Miami, Florida. Scammers are known to steal photos of innocent people and build a similar story around a fake profile. In this case, the scammer Nick said he loved dogs. We found an interview on Dr. Merrick's website where he talks about his two dogs. Now it was time to meet with Lori for the first time. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
let's get back into it. Hi, this is Brianne. I'm one of the search specialist assistants here at socialcabbage.com. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I've been briefed about your story. How did you guys get to the point where marriage was in the talks? I don't look my age. I just turned 45. You look great. <laughs> yeah. And I've been, you know, hoping and looking for somebody for the last 16 years since me and my fiance and I split. And I guess it was just easy for me to fall in love with somebody who showed a modicum of care for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he would be interested in how my day was and if I had eaten and how I was feeling and things like that. And it's like, I had not had that in so long. Mm -hmm. No, I hadn't had anybody on the male persuasion that it was not my friend, like that showed interest in me. Right. So it was just really easy for me to fall for that. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I fell for the boy that he loved me and wanted to be with me. And eventually I let myself open up to him more. And then I guess I just let myself love him because I had such a guarded heart. Right. And even though I felt love for him, I couldn't, he knew, I told him, I can't say the words. Right. And he would say, that's okay, babe. I know how much you love me. My love will be enough for both of us until you can actually open up and say it. Mm -hmm. So he proposed to you? No, the, the, that's the thing. There really was no proposal. Just talks right? of a wedding. Talking about marriage, talking about wedding. And there was really no proposal. Mm -hmm. No actual proposal because we had talked about it. I said, now, when you come here, to see me you've got to talk with my parents you've got to get their blessing mm -hmm. and I was kind of in my head imagining that he would you know right then and there give me the actual proposal and a ring right right in front of my family right because my parents are in a different country okay so I'm here alone which made it even more easier for me to fall in love because then I wouldn't be alone. What were some of the things that he had said or done that made you feel like this is real? This is a real relationship. This is a real person. Did he give you anything that validated that he was who he said he was? Well, um, he did try to video chat with me a couple of times. Mm -hmm. The first time it was like very short, there was no sound and it looked like him, the pictures that he'd sent me, mm -hmm. right? It looked like right. him, how he set that up. I have no idea. He really knew how to make me feel bad. He sent me a photo, another photo, mm -hmm. and then a passport photo, a photo of his passport. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, this is his passport. It's got to be legit because I don't know how to check if it's not. When we got this information, we looked at the passport photo. And so if you look at the passport photo, there's somebody actually holding it. There's a finger in place. And so we ran this through our reverse image search and it came and pointed to a site on Facebook or page on Facebook that allowed people to create fake IDs. And so this ID was posted all over and they were using it to promote their product. And so that's where this picture originally came from. Crazy, right? Because he said that he had a, he was uh, opening up his plastic surgery clinic in Miami. Okay. I was really looking forward to moving to Miami because restrictions here are getting very tight and tighter by the day. And I'd like to be able to live in some freedom. Right. So I was looking forward to moving to Florida and living in Miami. And I was looking forward to working in his, working in his uh, plastic surgery clinic as like a receptionist or greeter or just mm -hmm. some type of role. And we we're talking about that, things that I would do there. We we're planning on him having an emergency leave. <laughs> the next thing we're going to look at is the Department of Defense contract 
We've seen so many of these, and if you've watched our channel, you've probably seen a million of these, right? So we actually ran a reverse image search, and this pointed to a bunch of other contracts on the internet. So what the scammer did, they took this contract, they Photoshopped the text in there, and they actually reused the logo and the formatting of this page. This is why I wanted to reach out to, wanted you guys to reach out to Dr. Merricks because I want his input. I want his side of the story. And sometimes, you know, in these types of situations where someone's photo is being stolen or video is being stolen, we also respect their privacy. Sometimes they just don't want to get involved. And, and maybe he's aware of it and maybe he's not, you know, but we did try reaching out, letting him know of, you know, the photos that are being stolen. And um, so, you know, he is definitely, he definitely has that on his end. He can do what he will with that information. What these scammers do is they'll take the pictures from all the social media profiles. So as the relationship progresses, they throw out these pictures or these videos saying, oh, I was with my dog or I went here or I was about to go in surgery and here's the picture. And so people that tend to put a lot of pictures out on social media tend to be targets, but they also become victims because of it. So that's very unfortunate. You know, we do appreciate your story and we love hearing, you know, victims come forward and give their, their story and their testimony so that they can bring awareness to other people so that other people that are going through this or, you know, they're in a relationship with, with someone and they, they watch this video and they think, okay, that might be something that I can use and apply to what's going on with me because scammers are very smart, you know, and they adapt quickly. So it sounds like in your particular story, they built a lot of trust with you. Obviously you can take from this situation and look at it in a positive perspective because typically we deal with people that have lost hundreds to thousands to homes and their 401k. And, and so you definitely came out of it on top. And I feel like your story could be used to educate others and I really appreciate your time. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you, Lori. Have a great day. You too, have a good one, take okay. care. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.